it's Ashley Bookish Rome and I am back with a, another video as you can see from the title. This is my diverse June TBR as I attempt to participate in all the readathons and read-alongs that are going on in the bookish community. Um, a lot of or a, a, a bit of what I'm reading this month is influenced by what's happened um, in Minnesota. One thing that I want to start being more intentional of is reading more own voices in diverse books over white heterosexual cisgender authors. It's not that I won't ever do it, it's not that their works aren't important, but I think that I need to definitely be using my platform now to push more own voices books. Not that I don't read own voices books, not that I don't read diversely, but everybody can always do more. We all can do more. And I was very intentional <laughs> about this TBR that I picked uh, for this month. And most of these books are either, are not even either, they're just, most of these books are own voices rep or they have some aspect of diversity included in them. So we're gonna go ahead and jump in because I have a lot to cover. It's a lot of stuff. I may do timestamps below if I can, you know, old me can figure out how to timestamp some of this stuff because I'm going to be doing it in different categories. There's stuff for readathons in here. There's, I broke this up in my own document of, you know, physical books, manga, comics, graphic novels, ebooks, audiobooks. I broke it up by category. So maybe I can timestamp it down below just in case if you're interested in a particular section, then you can go ahead and zoom to that section. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk about the readathons and read-alongs that I'm going to be participating in and then if I will talk about the course for the readathons for the read-alongs you'll know what book I'm reading because it's specifically made for that book for the readathons I'll tell you as I go through my TBR what books go with what read-along and what they count for in whatever category so um, I'm going to be participating in the, the queer lit a -thon, and this is hosted by Kathy and Rogan and it, they have um, guest co-hosts Rebecca and Sarah participating as well. And this is going to take place at the time that I am actually filming. This video has already started May 31st to June 6th. So I'll be starting some stuff today. And I will make sure I list all of their information down below as well as the prompts for the um, readathon. I'm not going to be completing all the prompts. It's not realistic for me to complete all these prompts in one week. It's just going to be too much, but I did try to get about three or four of the prompts completed within a week, which I think is good. Um, and then I will be reading some other stuff throughout the month that will be queer lit. The next one that I'll be participating in is actually a read along. And this is the Blackout Buddy Read. And this is in response to what has happened um, in Minnesota in the death of George Floyd. And I will have some links below to places where you can donate funds. I think I did this in my last video. I'll make sure that I copy that stuff over to this video. Um, there was a lot that was going on with Twitter. I was, I don't really get involved in a lot of things on Twitter. I took a, I took a step back from Twitter um, for a while after I had um, my daughter and you know, I gradually have been going back in, but once this happened, a lot of things were happening in the book community that I just couldn't sit by and watch happen. So I definitely use my voice in the strongest of ways as far as um, everybody, um, especially the white part of our community and making sure that you are reading diversely, specifically you're picking up black books and you're educating yourself about the black experience and that's for everybody um, and that also includes black people because even though we're black and we have these experiences we could always continue to learn because you can't make the assumption that every black person has the same experiences because we don't have the same experiences even though some people would like to make you think that we do we don't um, so in response to that Shay is an educator and she believes that the best part of or the most effective part of making people aware is educating people and I agree um, so she is hosting a read along in which we'll be reading two books white fragility and white rage I will be listening to white fragility on audiobook and I'm going to I just today bought um, white rage as an ebook and what I'll do y'all is I will make sure I, I don't usually do this but I'll make sure that I leave links 
to the books that I'm talking about below just in case these are titles that you guys have never heard of. But White Fragility is written by a white author um, Robin D'Angelo and it's about why it's so hard for white people to talk about racism. It explores the emotions, the anger, the fear, and the guilt that are behind white people and why it makes it so hard for them to talk about racism. Um, so if you <laughs> I definitely would recommend reading this and if you're watching this video and you're white um, because what Shay did is she picked two books so White Fragility is by a white author and um, White Rage is written by a black author. Read both of them if you can y'all even if you can't read them within the time period in which Shay has outlined us to read them read was White Rage is written by a black author Carol Anderson and it's the unspoken truth of our racial divide and this one actually explores how it, it talks about it in terms of what happened in Ferguson, Missouri in 2014 and how people looked at what was happening and deemed that black rage and what Carol Anderson is saying is that actually no, you need to pull back a layer and understand that this is white rage at work not black rage so if like I said if you can definitely read both books I think that it's great that Shay picked two polarizing books um one written by a white author one written by a black author and that's and I use polarizing incorrectly but you have two different perspectives coming in about race and I think it's important that we pick up both so this read along is going to happen from June 5th to June 19th so it ends on Juneteenth if you don't know what Juneteenth is I challenge you to hit pause on this video open another tab on your phone computer whatever you're watching on and google what Juneteenth is. This is where the education process starts um, and that's when she will be having a live show with other black creators here on booktube and they'll talk about the books as well as their experience being here on booktube so I definitely recommend checking all that out. I'll make sure that I list all of the stuff that Shay um, has created so there's a website where you can buy merchandise um, there's a Twitter page and I'll make sure that I include her um, her announcement video. The next read along that I'm participating in is actually taking place over on Instagram and this one is being hosted by Oscar at Books T and Henny, Nia over at Page Galore and Seafort at Melanated Reader. I'll make sure I list all of their Instagram pages below and they have decided to do a stamped read along so stamped from the beginning and then also the one that um that Jason Reynolds just helped rewrite so it was the teen slash kids version of Stamped and I'm super excited to read this one. I was going to read the Jason Reynolds one but I want to get to the original book first and I may pick up the remix version later on sometime this year but this one is actually going from June to July so they split each book into five different parts and they will be discussing each part or not each part but they'll be discussing it in two parts I think on Instagram but I'll make sure I list all of the information below so I'm going to basically be reading at least three books this month that are in reference to race um, that includes like I said white fragility on audio white rage as an ebook and then I'll be reading stamp from the beginning as an ebook as well and the last well this is a lie because there's not this is not the last reader <laughs> This is not the last read I thought y'all thought it was four. It's five, but I'll get into that in a second. Um, the next one that I will be participating in is the Voltathon, which is hosted by Margaret. I'll make sure I list Margaret's channel down below as well as the announcement video. And this is a readathon that is always done in accordance to a Disney movie. And the one that they chose for this um, round was Brother Bear. And everything that um that is listed as far as the challenges they're really great there's even a kind of an educational piece where they talk a little bit about indigenous rep in disney movies and that's a challenge in order to educate ourselves more and the group book for the readathon is a book that has indigenous rep and it is i can make this promise i believe it's also own voices so this book actually covers all of the challenges so I'm going to end up reading I Can Make This Promise and then what I will do is also participate in that educational piece because I'm really really interested in that and this will take place from June 15th through June 21st so I'm excited to participate in this one and like I said I will list Margaret's information down in the description box as well. So I found this on 
Twitter randomly one day it just was on my feed I think somebody retweeted it and there is actually a group on Twitter that is hosting a Rick Ryden presents readathon which will go from June all the way to September of this year which I'm so 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 excited about because I think it's really great I love Rick Ryden stuff but I really like that he did Rick Ryden presents to give voices to marginalized groups so they could tell um, their stories of mythology and I'm super excited for our first one so we are going to be reading the first three books in the Aru Shah it's not the series is not called Aru Shah the series is called the pa Pandava Pandava if I'm saying this wrong correct me please correct me I think it's Pandava Quartet and we're going to be reading the first three books in the quartet in June so that would be Arusha and the End of Time, Arusha and the Song of Death. So this trilogy is an own voices trilogy and it's about a 12 year old by the name of Arusha who is spending time at this Museum of Ancient Indian Art while the rest of her classmates are doing fun things and she tells lies about where she's gonna actually be going for the summer. Three of her friends show up and she's trying to convince them that the Lamp of Bharata I'm probably saying that completely wrong is cursed so then she goes to prove them wrong and of course things happen. I'm really excited because I love mythology and I think that this focuses on um, Hindi, Hindu, excuse me, Hindu mythology. So I'm excited to read it and these covers are absolutely gorgeous y'all. Okay so this is, that was the first section of my physical books but of course it's all right. So the next physical book that I'll be picking up is Monday is Not Coming by Tiffany Jackson. I read Grown. You guys know that I talk about going on all the time. I was supposed to read Monday's Not Coming this month, but I just didn't get a chance to pick it up. Um, this is about a girl by the name of Monday who goes missing, and Claudia seems to be the only person that goes to notice that Monday is missing. I have a feeling that I know what this is going to touch on. I'm not going to say, but I think I have a feeling, but I'm sure that it's going to be hard hitting and deep because. I've heard so much about Tiffany D. Jackson being that way, just a very hard hitting author. So I'm excited to pick this up and then I will be picking up her other two books before the year is over with. This is another Own Voices book that is written by a black author. If you guys didn't notice, I'm going to tell you where the diversity or rep is in each book if there is some, just because I want everyone to be more aware of what rep is is evident in each book that I'm reading. The next physical book that I'll be reading is Nickel Boys. Like I said, I was also supposed to finish. This is this is a crossover from my June, my May TBR, excuse me. This is a crossover from my May TBR. I was supposed to read this in May. Once again, this is another one that unfortunately I did not get to. I'm really, really enjoying this. It's just physical books are kind of like, it's so hard to pick up a physical book, but that's gonna change in a little while. So I'm excited about this. And this one is also, written by a black author of course everybody knows who Colson Whitehead is I feel like a lot of people have read this book I also will be getting to unequivocally blindly yours by the love you guys know that the love like I said is one of my favorite indie black romance contemporary romance writers and this is about a young woman who wants to make it big in the ballet circuit which I think is interesting reading about that as a black woman trying to break into the ballet industry which is very much dominated by white women um, and I think that it goes from there and it is a contemporary romance so I'm enjoying it I think I'm gonna enjoy this because I've enjoyed pretty much everything else that she's written and this one is pretty short so I should be able to get through it quick. The next physical book that I need to get to is Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. As you can see I've already started this book. I've already started annotating it. I am 255 pages into it. I was going to do a reading vlog for this but I decided that I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do a deep diary, deep dive review and kind of talk about some things and some issues surrounding this book because there has not been a whole lot of discussion about some stuff regarding the author in this book and I kind of want to do that in a sit down type of video as opposed to doing a reading vlog so this will be one that I will finish in the month of June as well. And the last physical book that I have here is Deathless Divide by Justina Ireland. This is the sequel to Dread Nation which I read a while ago and did a full review of so I'll make sure I link that in the card symbol above. This is about 
these girls who go to this training school because it's post civil war but people are turning into zombies and it talks a lot a bit a lot not a lot a bit <laughs> it talks a lot about race relations and i kind of had some issues with the first one i only gave it three stars but i'm hoping that this one is better this is a big one i think i had this on my may tbr as well but there was no way that i was going to get to it in may so i'm hoping that i get to it um in june and this cover is absolutely gorgeous i really 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 do love this cover and in this book of course we have own voices this is written by a black author okay y'all so i also am now going to delve kind of into my manga graphic novels and comic section so there's three manga that i'm interested in reading and that is food wars volume eight food wars volume nine which i'm I can't tell you guys anything about because it's in the middle but it's a shonen manga that takes place at this elite japanese cooking school really really great if you've never heard of it definitely check it out i have a review of the first 10 volumes on this channel so i'll make sure that i link that up in the card symbol for you guys to check out but i'm excited to continue my reread i really wanted to continue my reread because the series is coming to an end and i need to catch up or else i'll never finish the series and then i also have nana which is a josai um, manga that a lot of people have heard of it's an older school manga it never got finished it's been on hiatus for over 10 years i don't think it's ever going to get finished which is so sad because it's so good and this is a volume number five i have not made it past volume number eight i believe i think there's a little over 20 maybe 21 22 volumes so with that being said i want to pick up my reread of nana as well i think i started this a while ago and got pretty far in but i'm gonna start from scratch so all of three of these books are translated and they're written by japanese authors so the next graphic novel that i'll be reading is actually two volumes and it's check please volume one and volume two by ngozi ukazu and this is great because it fulfills the challenge of the queer litathon as a graphic novel and a book that has sports themes so that's two challenges out the way and this is great because it has lgbt rep and the author is black and queer which listen i need to do better about reading black queer authors and this is a about a former figure skating champion who turns into a vlogger what ends up happening is that they join a hockey club i don't really know much about it but i'm super interested in it it's a coming of age story so i'll be excited to read both volumes one and two of this the next two comics that i'll be doing are actually a reread for me and it's miss marvel kamala khan volumes one and two by g willow wilson i'm super excited to be rereading this i read all through i think i read volumes one through ten which is when g willow wilson stopped writing it and i'm excited to go back through it and reread it again because it's just such a great addition to the marvel universe and um this has great representation the main character is pakistani american and is also muslim and um the author is also muslim and a woman of color she was born in or no she was born in america but she moved to cairo egypt to do um some teaching and stuff but it is I love the rep in these books are absolutely amazing. The next one that I'll be reading is Almost American Girl by um, Robin Haw and this is a own voices autobiography graphic novel. The author is Korean and it's about their experience and growing up. Uh, it is about um, the author growing up as the only child of a single mother in Seoul, Korea and moving to Huntsville, Alabama. I can only imagine, I can only imagine what that transition must have been like. So this is their experience um, of moving to Huntsville, Alabama and I'm really excited to read this. I think this is just such a timely book for a lot of things that are happening or have happened in the world all right y'all so moving on to the audiobook section of this video this video this the tbr is ridiculous y'all so the first book that i'll be listening to is a blade so black by l l mckinney and this is a retelling of alice in wonderland except this is with a black main character written by a black author and i'm super excited to dive into this one this is the first book in the nightmare verse um 
series. I don't know if it's going to be, a, it is going to be a trilogy because this third book comes out in 2021. So I am stoked to read this. It took me forever to get this book. Don't ask me why it took me so long to get to this book because I've heard good things about it. It just, I just have not gotten to it, but it's now it's time to read this one. So definitely if I like the first one, I'll be reading the second one come um, July. So the next one I have is Not So Pure and Simple by Lamar Giles. This is his first contemporary book that he has written. I have not read any of his other books, which include um, Spin, I know, and then he's also read, he was a part of the Fresh Ink anthology, but I have not read Not So Pure and Simple. I'm listening to this one on audio as well, and it, is, it sounds like it's going to be funny because it is about this guy named Dell who has a crush on a girl by the name of Kiera, and what ends up happening is that when he decides to join her church as a volunteer opportunity um he does not realize that it is actually a purity pledge which i think is hilarious that he doesn't realize that it's a purity pledge um and now he has to navigate his way into that while making sure that he kind of fends off everybody that's attracted to kiera i think that it talks a lot about societal pressure i'm sure it's going to look at toxic masculinity so i'm ready to read this one and i'm excited to read this one and this one it features black characters written by a black author the uh, next book that i'll be reading fulfills a challenge for queer lit a thon as all boys aren't blue this is own voices it's written by a black author it has lgbt rep and it fulfills the challenges of being um like a color of the rainbow it's mainly blue with some kind of like red behind it but i think that counts as like being the colors of the rainbow and it is a non-fiction book so that's four challenges that i have fulfilled with two books that have fulfilled with two books and this is about just personal essay essays that george johnson has experienced as an lgbtqia plus activist um he talks a lot about his childhood his college years how he was bullied how he built this relationship with his grandmother his first sexual encounters um and it is uh, considered a young adult memoir i've heard nothing but good things about this one and i'll be listening to this one on audio it's just i'm super excited for that one the next book that I'll be listening to on audio is Anger is a Gift by Mark Orshiro and I heard a lot about this one when it first came out and it's about a young man his name is Moss six years prior to this novel he ends up his father ends up getting murdered um, by an Oakland police officer. Of course, as in real life, um, the media ends up vilifying the father and not presenting him in a true light. And it deals with how when um, Moss goes to school, they are now becoming um, subjects of random locker searches, new rules, constant intimidation from the Oakland Police Department and how they're getting treated and learning how to take his anger and using it as, for something that's good. So this is definitely a timely book for what's been going on. Can't believe I haven't read this one yet either, but I think this one is going to be completely enjoyable. This is also a um, book that features black characters that was written by a black author. The next book that I'll be listening to is Solo by Kwame Alexander and this is one that's written in verse and it's about a young man by the name of Blade and he has a father who is this famous musician but he's washed up now he's a drug addict and Blade doesn't want to live in the image of his father so he's trying to basically make a name for himself but he is trying to distance himself from his father he ends up getting this letter and a ticket to ghana and it's about him kind of doing the self-exploration and finding out some stuff about his family so that one i think is going to be good i'm pretty sure that that one's written in verse so i don't know if the audiobook for that one is going to be particularly long i'm hoping not because i feel like everything i've already listed is, is going to be it's going to be super super long and i don't know if i already said it but of course this was another one written by a black author that features black hair okay so on to the ebooks <laughs> if this wasn't enough already on to the ebooks so i have about mm, eight ebooks that i'm trying to get through um some of them are reviews some of them are ones that i just want to read on my own so the first ebook that i have is the goddess twins by yodassa williams and this is about two girls who clearly are twins 
um, and it's they develop these supernatural powers and they have to basically their mother is in London on tour and um, they feel like they are living a normal life their mother's doing her thing and then she just disappears so in her disappearing they have to figure out what happened to her and they want to do the search and rescue her um, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this one at all it's not a lot that people have you know reviewed um, I did watch a review that I will link down below an interview actually with the author which was amazing and um, this was just published um, this past month so hopefully um, I will enjoy this one and see what this one is all about the next one is actually a book that I have for review and it's the boy in the red dress by Kristen Lambert I heard about this one from Adriana at perpetual pages and they really have enjoyed this book and I was just lucky enough that uh, penguin teen actually sent me an ER copy of it so I want to read it and review it and this one has own voices and LGBT rep and I forgot to say before that the goddess twins is own voices black author black characters but um, the boy in a red dress like I said is own voices LGBT rep and this fulfills the challenges is my last challenge so five challenges for queer lit -a -thon, where it's a challenge of a five-star prediction so I heard that this one is a murder mystery with a lot of rep and there isn't really much there isn't a lot of social issues tied to it it's just a great story so I think I'm excited to pick this one up and I think I'm really really gonna like it because Adriana has a lot of a lot of great recommendations I'll link their channel down below if you haven't seen their channel you need to check it out the next one that I have is we are not from here this is an own voices book as well with a Latinx characters and a Latinx author um this is written by Jennifer Torres Sanchez and I was also sent this for review of I think one teen and this is about um surviving the escape in surviving of going from the um crossing the u.s mexican border and i have not read a lot of stories about immigration but this is one that i'm definitely looking forward to reading because it is inspired by real events um in current events and although we have a lot going on right now and you know terms of um our discussion of black lives matter and this pandemic um we definitely have still a lot going on in this country as it relates to immigration. So this is one that I'm also genuinely excited to dig into. The next one that I'm picking up is A Deadly Inside Scoop, which is the first book in An Ice Cream Parlor Mystery by Abby Collette. I don't know anything about this. I don't want to know anything about this. I just know that this was a cozy mystery written by a black author and I put it I saw it on Instagram from somebody I put it on hold a while ago and it just came in time for me to read it in June so this is one that I'm stupid excited to pick up um, and hopefully I will be able to get to it um, sooner than later so the next book that I'm going to be reading is Home Home by Lisa Allen Ag Agostini and this is interesting I've never read a book with Trini rep and this one is a book that has Trini rep and is written by um, a Trini author and it's about a young girl who's moving from Trinidad to Canada and her experience in basically being in Trinidad to living in Canada which is two different things and this is one that I was sent for review um, and this one hasn't really been talked about a lot either but it's one that I'm super excited to read it's not a long book it's only 160 pages and it is a children's book so this will be a fun one to read as well the next book that I have is also a book um, that I was sent from for review and it's called letters from Cuba and this is by Ruth Bear and uh, Ruth was born in heaven Cuba and this book takes place in Cuba so we have own voices and this is kind of a historical fiction book about a young Jewish girl who actually moves from Poland to Cuba so I'm excited to see where this came from and if this is based on a true story I don't know much about it but I think that it's going to be great and 
I actually just got even more excited to read this one. And the last book that I have on my list is Bring on the Blessings by Beverly Jenkins. Everybody is familiar with Beverly Jenkins. I actually read the seventh book in the series a long time ago by accident, but really, really liked it. <laughs> I really did like it. It is a contemporary book um, about uh, a woman by the name of Bernadine Brown, and she ends up leaving her husband at the age of 52 and she ends up with 275 million dollars she decides to take that money and kind of get back to the community and she purchases a town henry adams kansas which was owned once by freed slaves and buys it and turns it into this area for the residents and the handful of kids that live there i'm really excited to read it because like i said i read the seventh one a while ago and really really liked it and I think there's 10 books in the series now. And this is the first book that I ever read by Beverly Jenkins. So I'm sure the seventh was the, was the first book I ever read by Beverly Jenkins. So I'm sure that the rest of them are going to be really, really good. Um, and I think the 10th book comes out sometime this year if it's not already out. All right, y'all, that's it. Believe it or not, that's it. I don't have anything else. I, I can't. There's no more else. I can't read anything else. That is a whopping I don't know how many books on that list. Y'all count it up for me. Tell me in the comments how many books that is. It's a lot of books but there are some changes going on my um daughter does have to go back to daycare so um and then i have to go back to work so things will change up a little bit with my reading and my work schedule is going to be super super different than it was before i think um so with that being said i think that it's going to be a little bit more time for me to do some independent reading so i thought i would make this list a little bit heavier than usual although my other lists have been quite heavy as well but if you guys have heard of any of these titles or if you have read any of these titles, um, let me know and let me know what you thought of them. If there's titles here that you haven't read before um, and you're interested in them, also let me know. Let me know what you're reading on your June at TBR. As always, as always, I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. If you're interested um, in seeing more videos from me, click the subscribe button. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Hit the bell for notifications and all of my links to my social media will be down in the description box and I'll be back with another video later.